Welcome, everybody. Good afternoon. My name is Jerod Yu. I had the technical issue on the other room. Would you be so kind to write if you can all hear us in the chat? Just some messages that we are, or we are up and running. Thank you very much. Should we wait a little bit? I think the main session was still running when I left, so we wait a little bit. Good morning to everyone. Yeah, maybe we can wait like a few minutes to for everybody to join us. Yes. Let's wait one more minute and let's let's start. Thank you very much for joining us. Yes, thank you so much and I'm sorry for the delay with the main session. I think we have how many people? Whoa, 100, 100. cool, <laughs> great. So I guess we could start. Yes, perfect. So um, I go back to the main slide. So this is session uh, for advanced proposers of the Horizon Europe Luxembourg launch event. Uh, you saw us already there. So my name is uh, Sanna and uh, I have my colleagues Jero and Ramona here today with me. So we are holding the session for you. And um, I'm in charge of, or I will be in charge of uh, cluster five. So it's a climate energy mobility and cluster two um, in Horizon Europe, which is the culture, creativity and inclusive societies. We are very happy to hold this webinar for you. Uh, before going to the actual agenda uh, and uh, etiquette, so for an online event, we can call it netiquette. Um, so for this event, use the chat box. So you should see on the right side uh, of your screen, uh, you should see chat questions, polls, and probably people as well. So use the chat box for any technical related questions. If you have audio issues, you don't hear us or something, um, and we will try to help you. And then use the questions box for questions on the content. And here we will take up the questions at the end of the webinar. And I believe you can, yes, you can see that. For Before we go into the content and the agenda of today, we have prepared a little poll for you. Or actually, I think we have four questions. And this you can also find on the right side of your screen next to questions. So if you go to the poll part, click on where it says polls, you should see the questions and it's an anonymous poll. So please answer according to what you think is correct. And uh, we will see and we will talk about, or actually Ramona will take them up uh, during, his, during her presentation. But without further delay, um, let's go into the agenda. So what we have prepared for you today. Um, we have, an, first of all, a policy overview that I will present to you uh, a quick overview of the policy behind um, Horizon Europe. Then with Gero, uh, you will go into the structure and coherence, continuing on the policy overview. Yes. Um, yes. And then with Ramona, uh, you will continue into seeing, looking at a bit how the road from Horizon 2020 goes into Horizon Europe. And finally, with Jero, we have tips and tricks and then also questions. As promised, so first uh, policy overview of the new Horizon Europe framework program. So the, for the next seven years. Uh, as you already, you already heard about this a lot in the main session, um, as you are advanced proposers, so you know Horizon 2020, and there uh, we were talking about jobs, creating jobs and growth uh, for Europe, and that is still there. Now we talk about prosperity and economy that works for all, works for people. But in Horizon Europe and what the Horizon Europe is 
the main goal and what is what is trying to do is to transform our economy, industry and society with a transition that is both green and digital. And this is something that is then called a twin transition. And you will not be able to avoid this when you lo look at the work programs and you look at the, the whole program. Here I have also added the logo of Sustainable Development Goals, so the United Nations SDGs, which were there already in Horizon 2020, at least in some parts, but that has increased um, in importance for Horizon Europe. And one of the aims of Horizon Europe is to try and achieve the UN SDGs as well. Going a little bit deeper into the two um, main policies uh, behind Horizon Europe. Um, here you have the European Commission slide or visualization of the new growth strategy for Europe, the European Green Deal that was announced roughly one year ago. And this is building on the development that we've seen in the past years. There has been climate legislation coming out from, or climate related legislation coming out from the Commission, um, more ambitious energy legislation, but with European Green Deal, so we are building on that, but we are, the, the ambition level is, has been increased in order to reach the overall goal of the European Green Deal, which is to have a, a climate neutral Europe by 2050. And on this slide, now I missed the slide, so just a moment. Voilà. Um, on this slide, you see the green boxes, which represent the eight pillars of the European Green Deal. You have climate ambition, energy, you have a clean and circular um, industry, you have building and renovating, um, zero pollution and toxic free environment, uh, biodiversity and ecosystems, farm to fork, and finally, uh, sustainable and smart mobility. Going forward, so on the digital part, uh, the overall policy or strategies shaping Europe's digital future, which was published this year in February. It's a continuation of the digital single market strategy, and it has these three pillars that you can see on the slide. So this should be also the official commission, commission slide. So technology that works for people, fair and competitive digital economy, open, democratic and sustainable society. And it includes, the strategy includes a comprehensive list of different legislative initiatives, combining communication, regulation and directives. And there is a little bit more on that on the next slide. So here, the aim is to combine the two, the two main policies and give you kind of a takeaway or summary of, of what, is, what is important. So for European Green Deal, the main aim, as said, is to have Europe climate neutral by 2015, but 2050, it has eight policy pillars. And what would be a good idea is to look at the roadmap, uh, what is coming up, uh, what has already been proposed uh, for the thematics that are relevant for you. And I wanted to add the just, just transition concept, which is important. So keep that in mind, leaving no one behind. And for the digital policies, here's a list of examples. Uh, you have Digital Service Act, which is important for every data pl platform. You have the Cybersecurity Act for cryptography, for data privacy, digital security for 5G. Then you have Data Governance Act. You have AI coordinated plan. Uh, to align with the, for instance, the Luxembourg AI vision. And finally, you have GDPR and its future update for any activity which uh, involves personal data, such as health. Then as, as was already mentioned in the plenary, and I mentioned I had the, the symbol on the, on the slide previously. So to keep in mind the UN Sustainable Development Goals that have in, indeed increased um, in their importance. Um, and here a practical tip for you to think when you prepare your proposals, when you think your projects, think, keep in mind 
which UN SDGs would your project help to achieve? Then you've already in the plenary and now you've seen what is behind the, the program, what are the overall goals, what is the strategy and policies behind the program. So why is this important? Why should you care as a proposer? Uh, it is important for to be successful, to have a successful proposal. It's important to understand the EU policy landscape in which the topic is framed in and think about how will your project contribute to the policy goals of the program. And this is in the blue box there with a little bit smaller font, you'll see uh, our practical advice. So what we see often in the uh, proposals is that that um, proposers are focusing on the topic text and often or sometimes uh, forgetting the wider context. So when you write your proposals, look wider and go deeper uh, than the topic. Look at the work program, look at the, the um, overall goals of the program, look at the policies. And this is something that actually then Jeho will soon continue on. But my takeaway for this part of the webinar, so keep in mind the big picture, and here I have a picture, so we have a little bit of a team here that you will see in the, my colleague's presentation about kind of maps or routes or um, ways or mobility related. And here I chose a ski map. So go up the hill and go from the topic, look downwards what the mountain is, is consisting of, what the topic is, is built on go up and down and think of the whole mountain. And here we are happy to provide our support. So uh, looking at the background of the topic and analysis, a policy portfolio, what this can be for the work program for the topic in question. Uh, looking also at what are the predecessing call topics and projects that you can of course uh, look into yourself as well. And going to Jero's presentation, he will continue on this, on the structure. Uh, here I have simply from work programs to the strategic plan to EU policies and keep that in mind when you're, you're writing a proposal. And he will go deeper into that uh, in his presentation. So I give the floor to you. Thank you very much, Sana. Good, uh, good morning, everyone. Good, it's me again, Jero. So as I was introducing the previous slide, I'm in charge of the research infrastructure the cluster four, uh, the digital sections, and the cluster three on security. And what I'm gonna do in the next 10 to 15 minutes is make with you a deep dive in the structure and the coherence of Horizon Europe. You are expert uh, participant to uh, Horizon 2020. So for the majority of you, this deep dive will seem quite similar to what happened in Horizon 2020, but Please stick with us because actually the switch, the bridge from Horizon 2020 to Horizon Europe is lifting the bar very high, very high. And we think it's important as expert proposers that you are informed about this new structure and the new subtleties and the new, or in the coherence that the program has introduced. So here you have a snapshots of the different structure and the different levels of coherence inside an award programs. It is something that has been introduced by Peter Adderall in the, in the introductions in the first sessions when he, when he was talking about the coherent approach. And I'd like to bring your attention about the fact that those different levels is actually divided in two. So you've got the blue part on the top, which is actually general to Horizon Europe, which link from the Euro European policies to the regulation of Horizon Europe and to the four key strategic objectives. I'd like to mention here, there was a question in the sessions before where somebody asked, uh, it used to be 10. Yes, they used to be 10, they're converting it to four. But as soon as you enter the war programs inside one of the cluster or inside one of the pillar, you reach different, uh, different level, which are explained here. So the key strategic objectives are turned into 10 impact area per work programs. 
And in the majority of the work program, you've got each of those 10 impacts that are distributed among six destinations. And I put here a star because uh, to my knowledge, there is only one which doesn't have six, but has seven. That's one of the subsections of, um, of the war programs. And actually, when you're going to go to look for the topics, if you remember before, we had topics like ICT-2051-2020 uh, or uh, LCE-11-2016, just to, to image in sums. Each of those codes will be actually directed by the destinations. So a way to direct yourself in it will be to look at the destinations. Then before reaching the topic, actually you have one, one uh, intermediary level, which are the sections, which are actually more uh, kind of um, general or gathering of common topics in a common area. But here you've got the example of the cluster four, where you have 38 sections and 285 topics at the moment. And I'd like to really underline this point at the moment. But actually what I want to bring your attention is, is to this picture on the top right. I'm sure of you uh, at home or at work, you have lived such a situations where you actually have to make a lot of connections between different digital hardware. Well, the Horizon Europe structure and currents, it's exactly like that. You're gonna have a lot of link and synergies between each war programs, between each topics uh, among different war programs and even beyond. And that's something that I want really to emphasize in this. Let's have a look, uh, a more detailed look. So we have just shown in a previous slide, we showed the fact that it was the war programs, the different level. But in terms of coherence, in terms of structure, there is one more level to add, which is the partnership. So let's imagine you had a work programs, like uh, any kind of work programs, and you've got the six destinations under each of the topics distributed inside the destinations. When you actually add the partnerships, well, you already have different way of adding them. Those partnerships can be including topics, can be not including topics, can be simply linked topic. And when you look at it, actually, you see that those partnerships are picking up some of the topics. They are not gathering necessarily all the topic inside the destinations. They are not necessarily linking all, uh, belonging all the topics inside uh, a partnerships. They are very different and diverse way all along the Horizon Europe structure. So you have to keep in mind to understand the synergies to which to, well, the topic you are interested in, to which partnership or partnerships it is related to. And to illustrate this, we just talk at the level of war programs, but actually, if we take as an example, the digital industry and space war program, the cluster four, which was mentioned by Peter Droll, but also by, by, by Mario Grotz, uh, when you look at actually what one is written, the synergies with other topics or other initiatives, you have indeed uh, synergies with the other clusters inside Pillar 2s, but you also have synergies between the, uh, those clusters and the other branch of Horizon Europe. You have the synergies with the partnerships, and Beyond that, you also have, and I cannot emphasize this enough, synergies with other programs outside Horizon Europe. And that's going to be very critical as, as expert proposal that you understand those links. If there is a research and innovation activities you are interested to perform, maybe the best way of doing it is not in the most obvious place. Maybe your research and innovation might be interested to do somewhere else, somewhere else inside Horizon Europe and maybe somewhere else outside Horizon Europe, but for sure, somewhere else link to Horizon Europe. And I'm going to give you an example. I'm going to give you, the next slide is actually going to showing you the links between the different topics inside the cluster four work programs and inside the different program and, and uh, the different partnerships that are mentioned. But I want to make a fair warning. 
do not read the next slide. Do not try to read the little, um, the little things. Just look at the structure. Please, get ready. We go after it. So here you have just the uh, representations of the cluster four coherence approach. You have in the center the three case strategic objectives that are related to the cluster four. You have the six destinations, and here are just represented the sections. We don't even go to the level of the topic, otherwise it will be too blurry. But all of those sections are actually linked, and this is the red lines, to all the outside, so the, um, the purple cloud, or, uh, which are representing the partnerships, or some specific programs, like the digital European programs, or the connecting European facilities. So this slide is not for you to analyze deeply. This slide is to show you that this is how the commissions understand the coherence of the programs. And that's why here I remind you about these thick pictures I showed you at the beginning. So what is, why is this important for you? It's not important that you know the overall structure. What is important for you is that the research and innovation activities that you want to do might target a specific topic, but thanks to the synergies and thanks to the link to other programs, you might have better opportunities or a better fitting occasions to do this research and innovation activity somewhere else. And um, I'm going to show you some example in the, in the, the next two slides. Um, but before going that, of course, you're not going to be just throw away inside the coherence of the structure of Horizon, of Horizon Europe. The Commission has put in place some structuring initiatives and got four examples for that. And those triggering initiatives are just made to ensure that if you participate to a project, the project is, by, is, is part of a coherent approach to the initiatives at EU level. So you've got, for example, AI for EU, which is supposed to be the backbone of any AI research funded by the European Commission. Bridge is an example for, um, for energy. I4MS is here for digital transformation of manufacturing SMEs. And Bowie is an example for everything which is related to digital innovation hubs. We just gave you four examples, but actually you've got many more. So one of the first things that you're going to do as expert evaluator is when you're going to do your research innovation activity, if you want to get it funded in Horizon Europe, you're going to try first try to understand what are the synergies to the topics you are interested in, and second, try to find what is the structuring project that is currently running that you're going to need to get in touch with. As an example, now I come to the two examples we want to show you. For AI, AI is almost everywhere in the Horizon Europe, but AI is also somewhere else outside Horizon Europe. It's inside the Digital European Program, it's inside the Connecting uh, Europe facilities, and it's also inside the Innovation Fund. And that what does that mean for you as expert proposal? That means that if you want to work in anything related to AI, not only you're going to have to link with AI for EU or one of the uh, network for the DIH on AI, but you're going to have to take into consideration the cooperations and the collaborations with other programs. How all of this will be structured, we don't know yet because we don't have the final draft, we don't have the final, uh, final um, uh, synergies, conceptual synergies by the commissions. We are waiting for that. But you should already be aware today that if you want to work in Horizon Europe, don't just focus on the topic you're interested. Have a broader picture. Let me give you another example for that, which is energy. Here, you've got where energy is inside Horizon Europe, but at the same time, you have also energy in the Digital European Programme, again, the Connecting European Facility, again, but here, a new programme, Life Plus, and it's also inside the Univation Fund. So that means that a participation to Horizon Europe, it was like in Horizon 2020. You need to think about how is the entire structure and you need to you needed to think about how this was actually linked to each other. But this time you have to go at a higher level even more. And 
This is my main take home message for you regarding my structure and coherence. The topic is not alone and it has an history. The coherence is not from your side, the coherence is from the commission point of view, which means for you, you've got a multiplicity of opportunities for getting your research and innovation activities funded. You need to find the correct one. And then you need to think, you need to get the big pictures within and outside Horizon Europe. Because if you don't get this tip, the, these big pictures, you might not realize that you actually have an elephant. You might just realize that you have just a part of it. Of course, say like that, as experts, you might say, whoa, I'm gonna need to get, uh, to, to get my uh, head around that. Well, lucky for you, you're not alone. So the main take home message is broaden your horizon and the word was choose carefully. And here the NCP services, uh, our teams, we are here to help you. We are here just to understand the opportunity findings. So this is one of the service we provide. Come to us, explain us what you're doing. What is your research innovation activity you wish to be found? What is your innovation management roadmap? What is the things you want to reach? We can help to find you the correct topic. I want to bring your attention to one of the services that the NCP is providing at EU level, which is called the topic tree. And you have a snapshot on the right. It is a tool which is made for justly understanding the fact that a topic is not alone and a topic might be related to old initiatives and to old portfolios of projects or portfolio initiatives. We have mapped those links and they are available publicly for you. And of course, inside our, our teams, we try to keep a due intelligence about the evolutions in our own field. We'll try to follow the projects that are structuring the initiatives like AI for EU or Bowie. We are trying to follow the policies like Sana introduced to you. And we are trying to follow the different evolutions in the ecosystem uh, of uh, Horizon Europe. That's what actually concludes my, my uh, sections here. What I'd like to, to say that if the snapshots you have here on, on the right side is actually making you think at a metro map or make you think at a train map. Well, this was not also made on, uh, uh, this was also made on purpose because now uh, I'm gonna give the floor to my colleague Ramona, who actually gonna drive you uh, for, the, to understand, for the bridge uh, from Horizon Europe to Horizon 2020. And she's gonna make you understand the difference, uh, the, the evolution, the road from Horizon 2020 to Horizon Europe. Thank you very much for your attention. I'll find you back quickly uh, after for the tips and tricks. See you later. Thank you, Jérôme, and uh, welcome to everybody. Good morning. Um, in my part, uh, in my uh, slides, I will walk through um, the road from Horizon 2020 to Horizon Europe. Uh, to, uh, like, let's say, uh, challenge you a little bit uh, and challenge your power of observation um, and make the difference between Horizon 2020 and Horizon Europe uh, to see if you are able to find your favorite programs in the new structure. Um, I will do this leveraging, uh, here you already know Horizon 2020 framework program so well, and uh, um, I will leverage on the um, answers to the poll to work through my slides and uh, uh, to convey the message. So starting from uh, the first question, uh, where the future emerging technologies will be in Horizon Europe? Um, here, the audience, it's a little bit split, but the majority is right, and uh, it will be moved to uh, Pillar 3. Um, then uh, the second question, uh, where societal challenges will be in Horizon Europe? And here, the majority is also uh, right, so uh, they, they, will be in, uh, uh, they will be in the Pillar 2, and they will be called the Global Challenges. Um, then uh, mm, the third question is, uh, uh, what is kicked out of Horizon Europe? Actually, um, is not the Joint Research Center because it will be under the Pillar 2 in Horizon Europe. And it will not be the European Research Center because um, 
it will be uh, and it will stay under the excellent science in pillar one um, but uh, everything will uh, will be the same actually um, <laughs> everything from horizon 2020 will be in horizon europe and will be reshuffled to make uh, everything more uh, cross-fertilized in fact uh, you will see the eit and uh, uh, access to risk and finance and innovation and SMEs that will go to pillar three and also uh, spreading excellence and uh, widening participation together with science and society uh, will be um, um, under uh, the structure, will be underpinning the structure of the New Horizon Europe um, framework program. And the last question, uh, it's about what is not true uh, about these affirmations. So environmental uh, and agriculture uh, will be merged and uh, this is true. Uh, they will be under the cluster six. Security will merge with the uh, social sciences and humanities and this is not true actually. Um, uh, they will be in uh, two different uh, clusters. And this question was uh, quite tricky because the two of these affirmations were not true and uh, um, it was, it's not true that ICT, nanotechnology and space will be split because they will be under uh, the cluster uh, four. And uh, uh, the last one is energy and transport uh, will merge. Yes, this is true. And they are under the cluster climate, energy and mobility. So it was quite interesting to see the answers of uh, the poll because uh, uh, this, uh, well, the majority was right, but not everyone was right. So <laughs> I'm happy it would, uh, this uh, was useful. Uh, going ahead, a big novelty of Horizon Europe are missions as we, uh, they were presented in the main session. Um, the, they are inspired by the Apollo 11 mission to put a man on the moon. And in fact, you can see a little man on the moon here. Horizon uh, Europe missions um, are meant to um, will spark innovation across all the sectors to deliver effective solutions to the major challenges facing our world. Um, they are five mission areas that you already heard before. So uh, they are protecting waters. Uh, living in smart cities, ensuring healthy soils and food, curing cancer, uh, fighting climate change. Uh, so far, missions are made up uh, by high-level advisory groups, um, e a group for each of the five mission areas. Uh, these uh, high-level advisory groups uh, have a broad horizons that go beyond research and innovation to side initiatives, for example, new regulations that will facilitate fulfilling the missions. Uh, however, the implementation of missions will take place uh, via the clusters. Uh, in fact, up to 10% of the clusters budget for the first three years will be dedicated to missions. Uh, in principle, some missions may be supported uh, also by the European partnerships, as some of these will be implemented under the clusters too. So, um, making the uh, link with what was presented in the main session, but here it will be more practical, let's say, uh, we can see that European partnerships uh, will be still there. Um, but they will undergo some changes with the aim to rationalize them. Uh, so from a huge number of 120 um, European partnerships under Horizon 2020, they will be reduced the number um, to 49 uh, European partnerships under uh, Horizon Europe. Um, the main change, um, starting from the public to public partnerships, where they were too many and too small under Horizon 2020, uh, we can see that under Horizon Europe, the number will be reduced and the funding will be increased uh, to enlarge perspectives and have a clear long-term goals. 
Uh, as for the joint undertakings and the institutionalized partnerships, they will change the name and the legal form, but what they will do, they will leverage the private funding. Uh, more practical information for uh, co-funded and co-program partnerships. Uh, calls can be found in the work programs under the clusters, while the institutionalized partnerships will have extra topics. Um, well, here, a nota bene. <laughs> uh, as was said before uh, in the main session, uh, Luxembourg national priorities are aligned with European priorities and use also with the European partnerships. Um, so um, this slide shows uh, uh, the partnerships uh, and under which cluster they will be managed um, main, mainly, um, you, where you can mainly find them. Um, but just to mention a few that are um, in line with the, uh, the national uh, priorities and uh, also, you can see that these ones are um, has have their uh, extra topics. There are innovation health initiatives under health, uh, digital industry and space. Uh, with health uh, under the cluster digital industry and space, you can find the uh, European Partnership uh, high performance computing and key digital technologies, and also smart network and services that. Uh, it's under discussion if they will have, uh, there will be um, uh, extra topics uh, and they, if uh, it would be um, institutionalized. Uh, under climate, energy, mobility, uh, mobility, safety and automated road transport is, um, and uh, f under um, the food uh, and the um, agriculture and environment, the circular bio-based Europe. Um, European partnerships deliver additional benefits beyond funding. So, uh, notably, they um, they bring synergies with other programs. So, um, remember, if you succeed in European uh, in Horizon Europe, you can open the doors for other opportunities for other programs and exploit the synergies. And as Jero uh, pointed out before. Um, broaden your horizon to take into consideration other uh, other programs uh, and exploit the synergies so uh, to summarize uh, the new approach to european partnerships they um, the, the key word here is rationalization uh, meaning that uh, european partnerships will have long-term perspectives so will be objective driven with ambition goals um, European partnership will be reduced in number, but financial commitment will be increased to have more impact. European partnership calls will have their own peculiarities. In fine, um, I know this is complex, but don't get lost, get on the right track. <laughs> Your NCPs are there to help you, providing um, customized support to you. Uh, they are a knowledge hub and you can tap into it um, by getting in touch with one of them. NCPs collaborate and exchange their knowledge and information to get back to you with the tailored support you need. And finally, don't forget the series of webinars you are preparing for you. And they will be presented uh, to you at the end of, um, of this uh, webinar and you will know more, um, you'll know more about that. Um, so I leave the floor to Jero, who will continue and uh, conclude with the tips and tricks for you to survive. Thank you very much, Ramona. So it's me again. Before going in the last tip and tricks, I would like to point you to the fact that we opened a new pool on your side track uh, that you can see on, your, on the right panel, which is about justly um, the different webinar series that we are discussing. Uh, we would really appreciate if you can go and uh, answer this poll to know which, which are the ones that have the most interest for our Luxembourg community. And at the same time, if there is one thematic that you see, think is missing, please do not hesitate to share it in a chat. Do to not, to, to not hesitate to write down something uh, that you would like we address specifically in a webinar. So, 
Um, I'm going to take the next five minutes to give you some tips and tricks. So you have understood from now that we won't get Horizon Europe under our skin before a while. It's going to take some months and some different webinar and sessions to get used to it. Uh, so, um, but there are some general things that are we we know already it's going to happen, and that's why we want to pass this message as soon as possible. And the first one, and I cannot emphasize this enough, start early. And I'm serious about that. You will need to get familiar with the new policy documents, so the Green Deal, but also the, the, um, the digital policies. You're going to need to build, and under, uh, build uh, the different networks inside of new partnerships. We didn't show you those 49 partnerships for a gargantuous exposition about, uh, of everything that's going to exist. We gave you those information so that you can target and strategically think about which are the partnerships that you want to be part of, what would be strategically important for you in your innovation roadmap, and what you will need to do to succeed. And the next slide is actually giving you some clues on how to start early. Of course, we have the draft, so you can ask us for the draft. We will be happy to share them. But please remember, they are draft. And according to some of the drafts, some are actually closed. Some are still open, meaning they are still subject to change. Already start to identify uh, the, the opportunity. Because you, by identifying the opportunity, you come to us. We discuss the synergies. We, we point you maybe toward new opportunities. We discuss a clear action path uh, for participating uh, to the project. Then, and I cannot emphasize this enough, um, I'm more speaking here for the pillar two and the pillar three. It has to fit your research and innovation strategies. You should always see Horizon Europe has the cherry on the top of everything that you're doing. If you base your entire strategy inside an Horizon Europe project, then this is already a failure from the start. You need to think in terms of how a European funding, thanks to its connection, thanks to its deployment of market, and thanks to, indeed, the money you're going to get from it, it's going to help the growth of your organization. And finally, you need to dedicate time. It takes time, it takes time, sorry, to link to the good uh, ecosystem. It takes time to partners with the good people. And I'm going to give you an example for the security war programs. The security war programs is going to be very, very competitive because uh, the budget are not that high for this cluster. And uh, one of the rules that has been set by the commission is one project found per topic. So that's going to be very competitive. And actually, the key stakeholders in the ecosystem inside the cluster three have already said that they're going to close the, their consortium by the end of 2020. So the key stra strategic organizations are already saying that they're going to build a consortium. And in January 2021, even if the draft are not yet finalized, even if maybe a topic is going to disappear, they're going to have their consortium closed. So that means start now. The second, and it's kind of linked to what I've just said, the second network. And do a good network. In the next months, you're going to hear the commissions organizing a lot of info day and a local info sessions to present you Horizon Europe um, and to kickstart the work. We have started us, we have decided to start early because we think that it, you should dedicate it this time to indeed collect as much information as you can, but also to build those networks. So here, the partnerships are uh, a way to identify the stakeholders. The portfolio of projects are a way to, to identify the good stakeholders. As we have been saying, look at the bigger pictures. Look at maybe another ecosystem where you may, might not be connected yet, but that will be existing. And build those cooperation on a long-term basis. You might not get a project with, with this particular organization, Yes, but you have built something with them. Built on that on the long term. And finally, I cannot under underline this enough, the current associations existing at EU level, uh, being uh, the ETP, being the different federation or the different association related to the partnerships, 
there are, is going to be the place to find the key stakeholders. The, and the, the next tips, uh, and I cannot emphasize also enough, uh, broaden your horizon. You, uh, broaden your horizon to Europe, to the synergies, and to the relevant programs. You might want to do something. We do hope Horizon Europe is going to be the place where you want to do that and where you can do that. But this, with these new programs, with the new synergies, maybe another programs will be better fitted. Or a part of the activities that you want to do will be inside Horizon Europe, and another part will be in another program. So you're going to need to broaden your horizon to the different ecosystem existing. So stay tuned. We have, uh, we, we're going to communicate by the mid-December the series of webinars that we're going to organize uh, between, uh, in the first part of 2021. It's going to be thematic webinars. It's going to be technical webinars. It's going to be for beginners, for experts, for what the hell am I doing here? Anyway, we try to share as much information as, as possible. We try to give you as much clue, as much keys as possible to make you ready for Horizon Europe. And for the first call, that's going to start us from March to April 2021. That concludes um, our, 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 um, our presentations. You have in the pool the different uh, webinars that we have foreseen. You have here a, a, a snapshot of what we plan to have. I would like to thank you very much for your attention. I would like to thank you very much for having spent these last hours with us uh, for digging inside Horizon Europe. And we hope this has been useful for you. And we hope that you get in touch with us because the entire team of Lux Innovations and the EU funding teams and our entire services are here for you to use. Thank you very much for your attention. And I'm yeah. going to go give back the floor to uh, Sana uh, and Ramona for the questions. Thank you, Jero. Thank uh, you. Indeed, there are some questions. And uh, one of the questions is asking about uh, if there is any financial assistance for uh, Luxembourg's former companies who would need to hire from outside um, the expertise uh, in order to be successful in Horizon Europe. I think yes. Sanna has the answer for that question. Yes, so we have had, uh, for Horizon 2020, we have had a program called Fit for Horizon 2020, um, which you can still see online on uh, my quiche and on our Horizon 2020 uh, website as well, the guidelines and the conditions for that program. And at the moment we are analyzing and, and seeing how or if this will be applied then for Horizon Europe as well, and how. Thank you, Sanna. Uh, indeed, another uh, question is about uh, um, the synergies. Uh, are there synergies between uh, funding uh, opportunities, national funding opportunities, European programs? I I'm going to take that one. So, um, there are some synergies indeed in the priorities. So is there going to be convergence between Luxembourg interest and European interest? We are part of this work just here. We try to align the European policies uh, with, uh, with uh, the, the policies of the Ministry of Economy or the, uh, of, or the Ministry of Education and, and, and uh, Scientific Research. Um, there, there is no uh, link in terms of, or I should say, there is no direct link in terms of funding. So it's not because you're going to get a funding in Horizon Europe that you're going to automatically get a fund at national level. Not in Horizon Europe. Uh, however, thanks to the synergies to other programs, like the Digital European Program, or the SAFE, or the LIFE, or either, the synergies are there. So the priority of uh, uh, at Luxembourg level is linked to Horizon Europe priorities via the synergies. Thank you, Jean. And I think there is another question uh, while you were presenting. Someone asked about uh, what's the goal of the topic trees and the, the, the logic. Uh, it's to maximize the synergies and how can help the topic tree to, 
to deal with uh, uh, all the complexities and yeah, maximize the synergies. Yeah, um, I think I, I reply uh, to these questions by writing, but to give more uh, a quick update, the topic tree is actually a kind of knowledge hub. So um, because we are working in this for many years, I for myself work since FP6 uh, on, on Horizon Europe. I'm sure my, most of you are working for even longer than that. Um, you know by, by due intelligence, you know that one topic is actually the successions or the continuity of previous topics. Um, you might know this for the topics you, you are often working on, but at the level of Horizon Europe, then that becomes something very difficult to track. So the topic tree is try to just to get the knowledge hubs with a collective knowledge of the different NCP at EU level for the history and the, and the synergies between uh, the different topics. Um, at the moment, the topic tree is dedicated to digital to uh, thematics, so because it comes from the ICT uh, war program, there are plans to expand it to the Horizon Europe step by step. We don't know yet if we will be able to make it at the entire Horizon Europe. We'll do our best for that. So it's working progress and I can only say stay tuned to that. Uh, for those of you who are interested, I copy past the link to the topic tree uh, in the question panel uh, under Idealis, uh, in there's a question of Axel de Pireux, but I'm also gonna copy past it in the chat. Thank you, Jérôme. And uh, another question that came, it's about uh, uh, do applicants need to bring part of the total budget? I don't know if it, it's not um, written uh, where, uh, what they mean about, mean about this. I think it's for the partnership. Uh, but yeah. You, you want to take that one, Sana, or I do? You can, uh, I'm not entirely sure what the question means. If it means like for collaborative projects, it depends for well, RIAs are 100% covered, eligible costs, innovation actions are 70% for, for profit, or if this is what uh, the person is asking. But we can also come back to that if, if you need help with the, the legal and financial issues, you can also come back to us bilaterally Thank yes uh, as, as a general rules uh, like sana said the only money you're gonna have to bring is if you're a private organization and you participate to a topic which is, doesn't provide 100 percent funding uh, it's mainly innovation actions and this is valid for the topics that are under horizon europe if the topic are under a partnerships but this time the topics are inside the partnerships. So meaning we're talking about an institutionalized partnership, then the reply is different. And the portions of the budget you have to bring will be, is surely gonna be higher. We don't have the full detail yet, but regarding a topic under Horizon Europe, the reply is at the moment similar to uh, the one of Horizon 2020. Thanks, Jérôme. And I think this, uh, another question, it will be the last one. Uh, I found it in the chat uh, and asks, uh, when do you think the templates will be available and more detailed information for, yeah, for applicants? Uh, if, if I can, this may be sent after you can complete me. Uh, it will it will really depend about what templates you're talking about. If you're talking about the templates for writing the proposals, there are some drafts available currently inside what we call the annexes of, to the work programs. It gives us already some indications of where the commissions want to go. But I would, before giving more information, I would like to just to say, this is a part of, this, of, the, of the draft that is currently quite moving. So it's quite changing. So the information I'm about to say might be changing in the coming in, in the coming weeks. Something that we have seen is that the commission wants to reduce the length of the templates to 45 pages maximum. So that means that the drafts, uh, oh, sorry, the templates will also be evolving. And the fir first indication that we have is that it's gonna be more or less the impact sessions will be put first and that's gonna be the most important one. The implementation sections will be reduced in the sense that for what we understand, the commission is no longer so much interesting in the structure of the project. 
And that will probably also mean that the excellence sections is going to be reduced because in 45 page, if you had to focus on the impact, you will not have the place for a 20 page uh, literature studies or explanation about the work you're going to do. So this is work ongoing. And uh, I, we hope this is something that we'll be able to explain in one of our webinars, first uh, part of 2021. I don't know if my colleague Sana wants to compliment me. No, just that there is a question still. Sorry, Ramona. Sure. Did yeah, the uh, yeah. on the trainings to continue what Jero was saying. So we are planning indeed uh, a series of webinars starting January next year. And uh, Jero mentioned it. Uh, we will will try to inform via our newsletter about what we plan. And also there is the poll um, to hear from you which topics you would like to see in the webinar series and also if you have some training needs that are outside that are men not mentioned there you are always welcome to contact us as for any other question you might have i think we answered uh, most of the questions and yeah repeat uh, what sana said uh, if you have more questions um, please don't hesitate to contact uh, your ncps Thank you very much, everybody, for joining us this morning. This concludes our, our webinar. The presentation and the recording will be soon available uh, uh, on our website. And meanwhile, uh, well, good luck with Horizon 2020. Uh, enjoy your Christmas vacations and see you soon. See you soon. Thank you and see you Thank soon. Thank you all.